Right. I'm delighted to say we also have Michael Diagnan with us this morning. Michael, good morning to you. How are you? Yeah, good morning, lads. Um, good. We, we've been covering this story now for a couple of weeks and, and kind of um, there's a, f- a few other people who have been covering it in fairness the same length of time, but it hasn't quite taken off or maybe maybe it's just about to take off as a discussion point. The, the GPA came out last week. I think, if I'm, if I'm right, counties like your own were kind of gestating on the information and looking at the presentation that have been given and coming to a conclusion. So what's your instinct about how big an issue this is going to be over the next week and a half in particular? Um, I, th- I think it should be very big, uh, Ger, because it's, I think it's very, very important. Um, you know, it's, I think it's an opportunity um, to change the direction of, of the football championship uh, for the better. That's my own personal opinion. First, I come back to the county's opinion uh, in a minute. Um, I think as a player, and I played for a long time myself, you want to be playing championship matches uh, in the good weather in the summer. It's a huge opportunity. And particularly when we see the lopsided nature of matches over the last... It has always been that, I suppose, in the GA, but this is an opportunity for teams uh, to play meaningful matches against teams of their own calibre. And we've seen over the last number of years the National League has really caught the attention uh, of the people and the players enjoy it because they're, they're close matches. And we, we're also not losing out. We're not losing anything. We're not losing our provincial championships. We're not losing you know, our all Ireland series. It's just a different way of getting there. And what it's going to do is give players, supporters, um, opportunities to go and play week in, week out in the good weather uh, for crowds of people to get out and go to the matches uh, in provincial venues. And it's, to me, it's very, very positive. And it's certainly well worth trying. And if there's tweaks needed, I just see some commentary that maybe there's a few tweaks needed before maybe bring it back next year. But, you know, I think you can go ahead with it and you will learn. There's, no, there's never, I don't think, a system brought out yet that was perfect at the start. But it's certainly going to be, in my view, way better. Um, one of the big concerns from a county board point of view, and if you take in our, in our case, we're in Leinster, uh, the provincial council in Leinster Council have been so supportive of counties like ourselves that going back to Michael Delaney's time in Leinster, Michael Reynolds now as chief executive, you know, we wouldn't, you know, we we, did, we, we have fantastic facilities in Offaly O'Connor Park. The Faithful Fields would be our latest project. And John Horn was chairman of Leinster when, when that kicked off. And without his support at the time, um, that wouldn't have happened because he was the first, the Leinster Council were the first people who said, look, we have this grant aid for you here and made that happen. And now we're in looking for six coaches at the minute. Leinster Council are behind us again. There's a few roadblocks at the minute, um, you know, with, 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 um, uh, and you know, with, with redundancies, etc., in, in in the association, and we're it's just delayed slightly. But again, they're fully supportive of it. So, I think the one thing, and Connor has, you know, Connor's report there, it's very interesting to see how that's. Um, but this is very late in the day, I think, for the financial implications or, 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 or the, the discussion to be coming out because there has been no information passed on, and there is a fear in provincial councils that they might lose um, some of their um, independence and, ha- and that ability to support <coughs> and to. To, to, you know, so what I would have thought was it would have been very sensible to guarantee a sort of maybe an average um, figure over over maybe the five pre-COVID years to guarantee that sort of income to the provincial councils as a first point, and then if things are exceeded, then you can give you can provide extra funding. Um, but I think that that's created a little bit of of a fear. And even um, last night we had a county committee meeting, and that was just one of the things that people were the delegates asked us to you know to get more information on was was you know what would be the financial implication for the provincial council and to make sure that they weren't put in a, I suppose uh, in, in a position where there's concern over, over their ability to operate uh, independently of Crow Park. Um, so, that, so 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 in overall, I think it's very positive. Um, we've been in touch. Our players uh, our players um, met on us. Uh, they came back to me, uh, the players' reps, and they're 100 percent supportive of Plan B. Um, our, I met our team management last week, uh, John Mahan, Tomas O'Shea and the lads, and they're again fully supportive. And our county committee, then uh, county management and county committee are also behind Plan B. But as I said, we, there was some uh, concern over the financial implications. OK, and does what Connor's saying, I, I realise it is late in the day, but is it, is it too late in your view to, to carry the day? Because if, if the figures hold up and it would be very easy for Coke Park to come out and say yeah they do hold up and also very easy your, your idea is a great one and I think it makes perfect sense to say over the next three years we're going to run this experiment we'll make sure that your income is the same at least as it was because centrally we believe there's going to be an opportunity for us to, to generate more funds we think you might even generate more funds locally yourselves if Connor's maths stack up that it's worth trialling for three years Absolutely I think it's an <clears throat> I think that but, but again you have to realise you're dealing with you know um, 
an association that is re relatively conservative and, and a little bit afraid of change. So I think it would have been, it would, and there's still time, as you say. But I, I think, uh, I think the Uchtan, you know, generally would have to keep maybe out of this, you know, in terms of, of giving a personal opinion. But I think maybe, you know, some, some, um, uh, I think Tom Ryan could come out and, and, and discuss some of these issues and give some surety around them. Um, because um, look, I think, I think, look, anyone that I've been talking to, uh, realizes well. I know. I know you've had some different views on on, on the program, uh, particularly from Ulster. But you know, people, if, if you're being realistic about it, like you have to listen to your players, um, and they're the ones that I wouldn't call it a sacrifice. They want to do what they're doing, and I always, you know, I think go back and ask any county player it was the best days of your life. You really enjoy doing it, um, but it is a huge uh, commitment. And why not uh, listen to them? You know, we, we have because as far as I can see, I haven't heard very. Or, or Annie, and you can correct me on this, but I, I think you know it, it's been fairly unanimous among the players, among the managers around the country. And I think, you know, on a trial period, what have we got to lose, um, especially if that financial sort of surety is given? So um, I would encourage, you know, people to think in those, in, along those lines. Uh, I can't speak for any other county. We all, we're all independent, um, and we'll think along our own lines. But, but we have certainly considered in great detail at Offaly, and, you know, um, uh, a wide range of people, as I said, from our from our management committee on the county board and our delegates last night, right down to, to our, uh, the most important people, our players, and and then a wide range of people on our management. I met eleven members of the of the management and backroom team the other night, and we had a very good discussion on it. And we just think it could be uh, revolutionary in terms of of, of, of the enjoyment and, and and of the opportunities. I know there's I know there's downsides. There are, there are a few things. Look. You know, you can be second in Division Three or Four, and get promoted, and then someone else could win the title cup, and you might go up and things like that. You know, but but there, there, there's little tweaks that will be, and, and maybe some of the merits are little, and they might emerge during it. But you can always change those. Yeah. And so I just think it's a fantastic opportunity uh, to show a bit of um, a bit of leadership, a bit of a bit of uh, you know a, a bit of forward thinking, and bring a bit of excitement back in because like nobody wants to see a continuation of these hammerings that have been going on over over the last number of years in, in championship. And just look at the average losses that some of these teams are taking. If you want these lads to continue to play inter-county football and put in the time and effort that's needed, you want to take their views very, very seriously now because we could look back in a few years' time and um, where, where life is changing, society is changing all the time, and maybe players won't continue to put up with the, with, with the status quo. Yeah, I, 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 and I can actually see a situation where somebody plays under county and then doesn't go back to their club because they're they're so fed up with the game itself. And look, you know, we're, we're in the realms of speculation there, but it's not a guarantee yeah. that you'll continue to play a sport where you're getting humiliated in public, representing your county when it was your dream as a child, and actually you end up getting beaten thirty points by Mayo or Dublin or whoever it is in, in the uh, situation that we have at, at the moment. Can I, can I, I just ask you what actually happens now? So, as as a county, your executive have decided that you're going to be in favour of it. Um, how many delegates do you guys get to send to special congress, and are they specifically <coughs> mandated then on the day to vote for for Plan B? Yeah, we have we have three delegates. We normally would have five, so it's it's reduced um, obviously because of COVID. Uh, so myself, the county secretary, and our central council delegate. Yeah, so we are mandated now, um, and I suppose we're, we're we're entrusted by our delegates now. As I said, the only caveat was that that, that we that we um, you know, and, and it should be forthcoming because uh, is is to get. Some you know more information around the financial interest. but as far as the proposal goes, yeah, the Offaly GA will be supporting uh, proposal B. How much would it help a county like you, your your delegates and uh, delegates of other counties, Michael, to to hear somebody higher up in the GEA give the thumbs up to maybe the figures that we heard this morning and say, yeah, that all stacks up and and, and this is all in the clear. Just just that extra sense <coughs> that might give people a bit more trust about the whole thing because that seems to be I, the issue here. I, yeah. It, it, it's not really. It's 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 that look. Our relationship in Offaly GA and and look, we have. I suppose it's it's a bit unusual that we, some so, some of our funding will come from Crow Park, obviously. Um, you know, in terms of how the, the division of funds, but but your relationship on on the on the ground on a day to day level is with your provincial council. You know, with with Michael Reynolds, with the coaching team, James Devan, Adam Hall over there, uh, with John Brown on the financial side. They're the people that really you know that you, that you that you have that you know better that you're working with on a daily basis. So those. Uh, I'm also on the on the management of Leinster because uh, there's four chairmen that revolves every year, and it would be uh, it, it's not. A, I think people would might think it's 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 you know maybe the provincial council trying to protect their own patch. It's not that at all. It's on the ground um, the work that they do um, with the clubs, uh, with the county. Um, you know, James Devan, the culture officer that looks after us, would would be around to, you know and not down on the ground as part of this process 
that we're going through to try to build our coaching on the ground. And I say we have, you know, we have five coaching staff at the minute, um, two GPOs, but we have an application gone in and accepted by Leinster for six more GPOs, and we're hoping maybe another two or three next year. But we need we need the expertise and the support and the HR element of, of, of Leinster to do that because we don't have a HR element. Like it's, it's a huge, I think, um, advantage for the Dublins and, and, and I, I know I often wonder how do, they must have their own HR uh, Cork, I think, looking at the, at, the, at the staff they have and maybe other counties have, but we don't have the resources to set up a HR and, and employ people. So we depend on Leinster for all of that. Then if we're doing developments in our clubs or everything, Leinster's and, and Crow Park as well would be involved in terms of grant aid. But, you know, it feeds up through Leinster up to Crow Park. So that relationship, that whole system, it, it works. It works really, really well. So I think if people, you know, uh, I think if it is certainly a fear um, uh, on the ground in provincial councils that they may lose, you know, some control, some, some of their own autonomy. And, I, and to answer your question, I think it would be massive. And I think, you know, there's a responsibility on the to come out and sort of answer that because there must be some cost analysis. You know, we've heard from Connor this morning, there has to be, and, and as you mentioned there, the commercial side, the TV rights, you know, the opportunity to build on this and to really promote these matches in the provincial towns, maybe some Friday night matches, Saturday evening matches, you know, which can bring great life and great energy to, 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 to the communities. So um, I think, you know, um, a good, I think, a, a, a good strong statement from, from, from some of the hierarchy. And, you know, sometimes you have to put your neck in. I know it's down to the toes, but, you know, you have to say, yes, look, we think this would be good for the association. We think that this will be well worth, as I say, you're only talking about a, a, a three-year trial. Uh, the GA has been around a long, long time. It'll be around for a long time to come. So um, I can't see any downside in, 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 in getting in behind this and, and, and really supporting their players and what they're looking for. And, um, as I say, we're all looking for reasons, not just the players, but I think, you know, they're the ones, that, as I say, that, um, that are playing these matches. And they really enjoy it. They can see that, the, the league matches are, are so, you know, they're played in the depths of the winter, but they're so close, they're so exciting. Mm. There's very little between the teams as in, in, in a general sense. Uh, and can you imagine when you transfer that over into the into the better weather and the longer evenings, uh, I think we'd we'll have a great championship ahead of us. I think that's an underrated part of this, that uh, for 8, 9, 10, 12 weeks of the summertime, uh, there's going to be big games in Tullamore, in Athlone, in Navan, in Newbridge. Like in... in uh, non-urban oh. areas there's going to be a transfer of people coming and going and spending money and having parties and like just generally the whole country could do with that yeah well, uh, and look as you say look, we don't we don't have all the, we don't have all the answers you can have, you have, but you have to have an opinion and i think i would agree with, with all of that so you'd imagine you know that's it and um you know that's not there at the minute and it's a huge opportunity and it's a huge opportunity to, to, to balance out a lot of things um there maybe won't be as many and you can still use Crow Park. You know, there might be an opportunity there to, to um, you know, maybe play not double header in Crow Park because well, players love the opportunity to get there. And it's very hard for the players in the lower division. Look, there's loads of things you can look at in the overall. Um, there would be a responsibility, I'm sure, towards um, you know people that uh, corporate ticket people in Crow Park as well that, are, that you know would have bought tickets on on, on a prom- promise of so many matches being there. So that all has to be considered. So like, it's not a simple thing um, to fix. But but there are so, to me there are there. there Positives far outweigh the positive and negatives. There are a few, as I say, negatives or maybe tweaks that might be needed down the road. But it, look, it, you know, I don't know. I, I just think I, um, I, I think generally there's a people feel it's the right thing right across the country, and it's then to get to 60 percent. Uh, but I don't think there's any support for for proposal A uh, for teams to go out into other provinces. So it's this, it's this or stay as we are, and. I think it would be a very backward step to stay as we are with all the problems that we know we've had over the years. Do, do you know what, Michael, I think people listening to you this morning would have, would have gained a good bit of hope that your delegates going to Congress are actually unanimously in favour of this because I think you kind of touched on it yourself there that, that the GEA can be a conservative enough organisation and, and there is this feeling out there that the people who go to Congress are, are the, the, the very uh, kind of the, the, the living proof of that almost, that, that they are conservative. But actually from what you're saying, there was good discussion that happened in Offaly, good constructive debate that happened and you've come to the conclusion and, and I think that will give people a lot of hope that all the other county boards around Ireland are doing a similar thing. Yeah, well I, I think um, I qualify in a general sense it's, well, it's not conservative. It's just that there is, you know, you, you don't know what way things are going to go. So you're, you're taking a little bit of a shot into the unknown. But I think, look, the evidence is there. And I say, if somebody came out and just said, look, we've looked at this uh, in these under these headings, and this is what we think, and it, it will work or should work, um, I think that would give great hope. But the other thing, just about our delegates, you know, I see them in there last night. It was the first actually physical meeting since March 
2019. And, um, you know, it's another thing, a huge challenge facing the association is the work that volunteers are doing on the ground. You know, we have, we actually at the minute have no full-time staff in Offaly. Um, our operations manager retired some months ago and we haven't replaced him yet. And, you know, um, some counties have huge amounts. I've talked about this before in terms of equality of funding, etc. But, you know, the time and effort even for, for club, like the amount of matches and this split season has caused, I suppose, a huge... Like we, and we also had all of last year's championships. Like, well, not all of them, but we had to finish our senior hurling championship. We had all our underage competitions. Uh, and we have finished all of them now and we're uh, uh, getting to knockout stages and all of these years. But we're running right up to the third week in November. And the work rate on these people, um, and, you know, there's, there's, there can be criticism. I, I, it actually annoys me intensely when I hear people talking about these bogeys in the GA, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm, I'm one of those myself now. But, but the work that they put in on the ground on a day-to-day basis and the pressure that they're under and, and the responsibility of, of, of even chairing a club now and our secretary of the club, the work rate, is absolutely it's massive. And, you know, um, you know I, I did nothing but the highest regard for, for all of these people. And, and uh and, but it, it, it is going to be a challenge into the future. Like you, you don't see too many people, maybe under 40 years of age or 30, uh, 50 years of age, maybe even at these, and even club meetings or county meetings anymore. And uh, you know, it, um, it's it, it's going to take a lot of uh, thinking as well and soul searching. I think in terms of you know recruiting new people, right? So you're is to fill any role um, with the right people, and there's a lot of roles that you need to fill to be be able to operate properly and successfully. Um, so. Just, anyway, it's nothing to do with today's debate, but it's it's a huge challenge. I think it feeds and into it, Michael. To be honest, I think that well, the, everything feeds it. Do you know, I, I do. I, I think if you if you if everybody agrees at the start, this is our plan now for the next three years. It'll be a much more vibrant place. It'll be, I think, easier to get people to come because, you know. I definitely, talking to players over the last 10 years from counties that weren't the three or four counties who believed they could win in All-Ireland, there was this sense of what's the point and it kind of feeds into a lot of people's decision. They're going to just volunteer for the club. They're not going to go on to be a delegate at county board because ultimately they're in a they're in a second or third tier organisation that isn't actually quite respected centrally the way it should be. But I believe that this is an opportunity for every county to get the respect it deserves, to have full home grounds for matches that are meaningful at the end of a training period that everybody's been training for the same amount of time. I, I don't know, it just feels like we're ready for an explosion here and for whatever yeah. reason there's a blockage. Yeah, no, there's a great opportunity to breed new life and I agree with you because like, it does need that um, <clears throat> and you need that all the time in terms of, uh, of driving the team forward. And um, Yeah, and look, I think maybe... You know, I suppose you know county boards are, as you said, they're so busy as well. And like you can't underestimate this. Like um, there's 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 ten motions on the on, on and we've looked at them in in detail. We've discussed them at management levels in terms of what way we're going to. Uh, we 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 had a brief discussion on the last night of county. Like some of them are are, are minor enough in comparison to this one, but but the, you know the, the, there's some interesting ones in there as well. And to, you know to take the time and to go through them and to tease them out and analyse them and to discuss them and to reach a consensus. That all takes, you know, and to go and talk to talk to a lot of been a lot of online meetings as well over the over the last eighteen months. Um and there's so much happening on a day to day basis. There's matches coming at you every night in clubs and everything else. And this is what happens that things like this don't maybe get the attention that they should get. And then they're maybe not passed or they are, you know, whatever or maybe wrong decisions are made. Yeah. Um you know, for like there's little ones we would have like the giant captains like what difference does it make that just two lads go up and accept a cup? Uh, you know, and, and it just happens and slips through maybe because people aren't thinking and, and and that's a very minor a minor issue. But um so I, I just think stand back and say go through a process, talk to your players, really engage with them, talk to your management, talk to your delegates. Uh it takes a few days, it takes a, you know, and, and explain what the, because I say a lot of people out there, even involved in clubs all over the country, don't fully understand you know, what's actually hap- what's happening with this. No, I think that's fair enough. So just my last point on this is you, you actually haven't seen official documentation around the finances yet. That hasn't been communicated with you guys. And presumably it hasn't been communicated with the, the um, provincial council either because they would have passed it on to you to say, look, this is what the financial projections for plan A look like, this is what they look like for plan B, and this is the status quo. Correct. And you want yeah, those? Yeah, I think it's very important. I think it's very important to give that I think if, if if coming from your provincial council down to give that, I suppose I think that would I think that would certainly uh, add a lot of weight to the decision making that's going to happen at special congress. Okay.
Good stuff. Michael, thanks a million for taking the time to join us this morning. I think it's important to get the viewpoint of, of people who are, have, have a, a meaningful voice and who are actually going to be there putting their hands up or pressing the button. Hopefully it's a, a yes for plan B, but we'll see. Thanks a million. Okay, lads. Cheers. Good talk to you.